In this video, we're going to take a look at how to draw a portrait from the profile view using charcoal and powdered charcoal. I'm going to begin by just lightly drawing out the contour lines of the portrait using a charcoal pencil, which has compressed charcoal inside of it. So the mark's going to be pretty dark here. I'm just going to concentrate on the areas of contrast that I see. I'm also going to draw pretty loosely here. I don't want to be too obsessed with the details. I want my lines to be very loose. I also may make a few notations as I work about where the areas get darker and where they get lighter. Once I've got a loose contour line established on the surface, I'm going to go ahead and start applying the powdered charcoal using a pony hair brush. A word of caution here, the charcoal is very dusty and dirty, so you want to use this in an environment where you don't mind things getting a little messy. This is going to help us establish a nice middle value that we can work from. Uh, when you're working on a white surface, you have to work towards the darker values, and when you're working on a darker surface, you have to work towards the lighter values. So by putting the powdered charcoal down, it establishes a nice mid-tone value. Once we've got that on the surface and we're happy with the application, we can go ahead and go back into the drawing and continue to establish some of the dark and light areas that we see. Here initially I'm just going to focus on the darker areas and try to mimic the shapes that I see in the areas of darker value. For this drawing there is intense light coming from the lower right hand corner. This means that the majority of the face is going to be in dark shadow. There are going to be some areas of highlight, intense highlight, that hit the outer portions of the contours and we'll establish those in a moment with an eraser. To create areas of smoother transition I'm going to use a blending stump and just work some of that compressed charcoal into the surface. I'm also going to apply the charcoal with the side of the charcoal pencil instead of the tip of the pencil. This will create smoother transitions or smoother areas of value instead of uh, areas where you can see the lines. And once those areas are applied, I can always go back with the blending stump and smooth out the transitions even further. I'm going to switch over now to a larger stick of compressed charcoal. This will allow me to cover a larger area. And the charcoal that I'm using here is a little bit darker in the stick form, which will allow me to push the darker values a little bit further as well, thus increasing the contrast. When you're applying any type of media, whether that be a drawing media or a painting medium, you want to make sure that you're thinking about the cross contour lines of the form of the object that you're drawing. In this case, uh, the face goes in and out in different areas, and I want the stroke that I make on the surface to mimic that form. This will help further the illusion of the form in the drawing and, and make the drawing a bit more convincing. I'll continue that charcoal application up into the area of hair and uh, on the upper portion of the forehead. Again, very loosely here. We don't want a whole lot of information about details. All right, now we can go back with the kneaded eraser and start to erase out some of the areas of highlight. And this is going to really increase the contrast and make the illusion of light kind of come together a little bit more. Again, since our light source is originating from the lower right hand corner, the light's going to be a little bit more intense on the right side of the figure. The great thing about a kneaded eraser is that you can move it and manipulate it into different shapes and forms as you need it. Um, you can bring it to a sharp point if you need a sharp point to erase an area, or you can erase a larger area by making it kind of flat. You can also just touch it to the surface and lift up some of the material on the surface making the whole area lighter in value if you like as well. 
needed erasers were best suited for powdery types of medium, um, like for example the charcoal here or pastel. Typically the upper lip is going to be darker in value than the bottom lip, but since our light source is originating from below, the top lip is lighter and the bottom lip is darker. There's also a bit of highlight that's hitting the bottom portion of the neck. Typically this area would be darker. Now we can go back with the compressed charcoal pencil and add a few more details and make a few areas darker if need be. Typically when you're doing a charcoal drawing you'll want to work back and forth between dark values and light values anyway. Now with compressed charcoal I'll go back and establish the background. This will further enhance the contrast between the light and dark values. And as we use the compressed charcoal, we can further define the edge of the profile of the face, going right up to the edge with the darker value. I'll also use my finger to work in areas of the compressed charcoal to make a smoother background, and I'll use the pony hair brush to move the charcoal around on the surface. Now I don't want a super sharp edge around the profile of the face, so I'll just use the brush to move the charcoal around right on the edge to blur up the edges just a little bit, which is closer to how we see things in reality anyway. Then I'll go back with the kneaded eraser and make some of the highlights just a bit more intense. In the end, you want to create a full range of value. In other words, if you took a value scale and put it up next to your drawing, you should be able to find most of the values in that value scale in your drawing somewhere. I'll also smooth out some of the transitions between the darker values and the mid-tones just to make uh, a little bit more of a rounded appearance to the face. A few last minute adjustments and our portrait sketch is complete.